I'm Nathan. Welcome to the Armory. Today I want to talk about what criminals are really afraid of. So criminals might be afraid of other criminals. Let's say you have someone who's in a gang and he is afraid of running into the uh, other gang members that are not in his gang, his rivals, and you know a shooting may break out, that sort of thing. But in truth, even though this does happen, the majority of gang on gang contact is posturing. And what that means is one side talks smack, the other side talks some smack, somebody flashes a gun, somebody flashes a bigger gun, and usually no one gets hurt or maybe there's a fist fight, but you know, a lot of times there's a taunt. They don't want to shoot each other, so they leave and they talk a bunch of smack and no one gets hurt. So gang members probably aren't afraid of other gang members and criminals really aren't afraid of other criminals uh, unless they specifically did something to them and are trying to avoid a particular one that they, they maybe owe money to or something like that. All right, so are criminals afraid of the police? Well, the criminals are afraid of going to jail or prison. They do not like that at all. But I don't think that they're truly scared of the police because the police have a set of rules they have to follow. The criminal knows that if the police comes after him and he knows the police is gonna catch them, they toss their gun, they try to get rid of their drugs, they try to say, I don't know what was going on. Uh, they play a game with the police because they know the police, if they do not attack the police, cannot harm them. Uh, you know, they cannot use deadly force unless they uh, are, are warranted for it. So I don't think criminals are truly afraid of the police in the idea of they'll be killed by the police. They're afraid of the police in the idea of they don't want to go to jail. So if they have the advantage uh, on the cops, they may take it, but if they don't have the advantage on the cops, they will surrender and they will go to jail because that is better than dying. So I don't think criminals are really that afraid of the police. If you ask a criminal, he'll tell you he's not afraid of the cops. Uh, he actually is proud when he goes to jail. It's part of his street cred. All right, so uh, criminals though, I do believe are afraid of concealed carriers. What I mean by that is, let's say that I'm in a parking lot, a criminal approaches me, he walks up, he uh, shows me a gun and says, give me your money or I'm gonna pull this out and shoot you. And I say, okay, okay, uh, let me give you my wallet. And I go, bam, and I shoot him in his face. Now, uh, what happens then is, after he gets shot in the face by me, and I go through all my court and stuff uh, to see if it was justified or whatnot, then the other criminals hear about it. And they sit around with the grapevine and talk about it. And they go, did you hear uh, old Johnny Boy he went to mug some guy in the Walmart parking lot. He got shot in the face. And of course this happens and they all talk about it. Well, then uh, another one goes to rob someone and he gets shot and killed. And pretty soon all the criminals suddenly decide that going and robbing people uh, and mugging people is not a good idea anymore. That is why in every state where concealed carriers are, the aggravated assault rate has dropped. The mugging rate, the carjacking rate has all dropped in every state across our nation where there's concealed carry. Because even though a very small percentage of the population is concealed carry, it takes a very small percentage of the population uh, either sticking a gun in the face of a bad guy or actually shooting a bad guy for the rest of the bad guys who are a small percentage of the population to get the word out. Okay, they know when the cops are coming, the sirens are blaring, the cops are wearing a uniform. But what they don't know is when they walk up to a person like me or you, if we have a gun and can shoot them back. So they learn if we want to survive and be smart, we'll sell our drugs, but we won't go and mug people because they may be carrying guns. Now in states where they don't allow it or cities where they don't allow people to conceal carry, they get robbed all the time. The predators prey on the weak, they prey on the sheep. If you have people that look like sheep but may have fangs to bite them with, they will stop preying on the sheep or will be very careful in their selection. It will drop the attacks down. So this is what is known as detente. It's uh, if somebody else has a military and is very aggressive, then you build up your military and they won't attack you because you can defend yourself against them. If somebody has an aggressive military and you downsize your military, to convince them you're not worth attacking, what do they do? They roll right across your borders and they enslave you and they put you under their thumb. This is what is being proposed now with the uh, weapons ban. They're going to come after 
uh, all semi-automatic rifles and semi-automatic pistols according to the way the legislation that Feinstein is going to present after the uh, in 2013 in January they are going to come after all semi-automatic pistols and all semi-automatic rifles they're going to come after all bolt actions that could take a magazine they're going to basically take 90 percent of or more of the rifles and pistols away we will be forced to walk around with revolvers and have uh, you know peepaws double barrel shotgun at home for self-defense the criminals will still have access to all the pistols they had they will still have access to all the rifles that they have all the right shotguns that are high capacity you know can shove nine in the pipe they'll still have all that and guess what when there's a void of sidearms to take from the populace that are easy to obtain they will suddenly have a supply and demand issue they need weapons and they can't get enough at some point so what happens when there's a supply and demand issue for illegal things in this country it flows across the border from mexico all of the ak's that the drug cartels are shooting each other with in mexico where ak's and guns really aren't allowed at all all those AKs will start being imported into the United States and more AKs will be brought into Mexico to replace the ones they sold us. And all of a sudden, you're going to have all the criminals running around with fully automatic rifles. That is what a real assault weapon is, is a fully automatic rifle. So this is going to be fun because eventually I believe they are going to take away uh, our rights to our firearms in America. And someday you're going to support that and then shortly after they come in and take away all the firearms and all of our rights to defend ourselves the predators who are still being armed will start breaking into your houses they will accost you in the parking lots at night you will be afraid to go anywhere you won't understand how it happened because you thought you passed a law to fix it but you didn't you just simply empowered the wolves i don't know anyone who ever has a flock of sheep and says, you know what, we need to take those sheep dog that protect those sheep away and that way the, uh, the, the wolves won't be as interested because they won't want to come down and fight the sheep dogs anymore and, and that'll, keep the, that'll keep the sheep safe. Yeah, that's great logic except that they'll feast on the entire sheep herd then once you disarm them. And then you're going to say, well, what about the cops? Yeah, uh, feel free to call the cops and then start your stopwatch timer and it'll take them uh, much longer than it would take you to bleed out for them to arrive. Seriously, the cops take about five minutes to 20 minutes to show up in most major cities, depending on the type of call that comes in. So uh, if you're getting attacked, it's all gonna be over by the time the cops get there. They're gonna hear the sirens, they're gonna take off, you're gonna be bleeding in the parking lot and dying, and you're gonna say, man, I wish that that guy who made that video was around who had that pistol that he used to be able to carry so he could have shot this guy before he stabbed me with a knife or beat me to death with a baseball bat. By the way, uh, just so you know, more people are beaten to death with baseball bats and stabbed with knives than die from firearms every year. So I don't hear any ban for baseball bats or kitchen utensils or hunting knives. I hear about firearms. So we are a little silly in what we focus on in this country. We get very focused on one little thing that really isn't the true nature of the problem. So again, if what we want to do is stop people from being killed, we need to take away knives, baseball bats, and thirdly, firearms, because the other two are more dangerous and more deadly statistically if you go to the FBI's website. Don't believe me? Go to FBI.gov, look under their uh, 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 statistics on crime, and you'll see it. 12,000 people die from firearms a year in the United States, murdered by firearms, and 16,000 are murdered by everything else, including knives, baseball bats, and other random objects that are picked up and bludgeoned people to death with. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was educational. And by the way, the way to cut down on crime is not to take away my gun. It is for you to carry a gun just like me and convince the criminal to stay at home and not engage us. So, uh, being well armed is the best defense. Thank you. Have a good one.